Welcome into K-State Online. I'm Mason Voth. That is Derek Young. We are part of the On3 Network, bringing you K-State content on a daily basis. And the content we bring you right now is not the most positive news for the Wildcats. Chris Kleiman confirming some suspicions on Daniel Green. He spent a lot of time in the injury tent on Saturday in the loss at Missouri. So things aren't weren't already tough enough starting the week, coming off that heartbreaking loss at Mizzou. Uh, there, there's another loss that the Wildcats have to worry about, and it's at a position uh, where you felt like it was a real strength this year. So I'll defer to you, D.Y. You're the man with all the information on this, and uh, what, what can you share about Daniel Green's circumstances? Yeah, he's out for the season, as that was confirmed by head coach Chris Kleiman. And, you know, it's disappointing because he came back for a sixth year, which is pretty rare. Um, took advantage of the uh, rule that was enabled by the COVID-19 pandemic where the 2020 season didn't count and he wanted to come back next year to put a healthy season on tape in hopes of having an NFL future because that was not the case last year. He was banged up and didn't put out a lot of great tape towards the end of the season because he played through injury. He gutted it out for Kansas State. The same thing he did last Saturday, gutted it out for Kansas State in hopes of a win, although that didn't happen at Missouri. But yeah, it's just disappointing because he's injured again and he returned. So his last season wouldn't have been injury riddled. So it's, you know, I feel for him. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a really unfortunate deal because this is, has always been the situation with Daniel Green where it always seems like something is, is nagging him. Something is popping up and has to be worried about on the injury front. And obviously, like what you said, he came back this year to try and put all that by the wayside. You thought, hey, what will it look like if K-State gets a healthy Daniel Green at linebacker paired with a guy like Austin Moore, who's turned into a possible all Big 12 candidate? And, you know, the linebacker was supposed to be probably the strength of this defense at the start of the year where you had two guys coming back like Green and Moore. And then you, you throw in the fact that the staff really likes Des Purnell. Jake Clifton is a guy that they like, but also hurt and some promising true freshmen uh, that are that are in the mix now. And, and speaking of, that means with the Daniel Green injury that on the depth chart for this week's game with UCF, Austin Romain, a true freshman, is listed as the starting Mike linebacker. So this is a uh, this is an interesting circumstance for K-State to be in, and first and foremost, unfortunate for Daniel Green, uh, but it, it's also an unfortunate deal for the Wildcats. Yeah. Fortunately, you have the depth. Um, this year at linebacker, which is something that we, you know, discussed often in the off season, but you always hope that you don't have to use that depth. I guess is a good way of putting it. But the, you know, it's uh, week four and they're already having to use it because Jake Clifton's another guy that, as you said, dinged up, probably would be the next guy off the bench at, at multiple linebacker spots. I don't think he's going to be available this week against UCF either, as you said. Um, I mean, it was always hinted at it, hinted at it on Monday when the depth chart came out. As I'm looking at it right now, where Daniel Green was not even on the depth chart, Austin Remain, true freshman from Hillsboro, Missouri, in the St. Louis area, um, has the top spot projected to start. Now, if they wanted to be creative and they could put Austin Moore at the mic spot, as I think that's something that he's certainly capable of doing. And maybe ultimately he's the backup, so to speak, to Austin Remain. So when Remain comes off the field, Maybe you just slide in Austin Moore to the mic spot and, and put Ace and Usum at the will spot. So there's a few things that they certainly still can do, and that's because they do have the depth. Um, unfortunately, the main piece of depth is Jake Clifton, who I don't expect to be available this week against UCF. So they're going to be playing two true freshmen quite a bit in the first Big 12 game of the season, which now, these true freshmen have a bright, bright future. They really like Austin Romain, and they really like Asa Newsom. And who knows? Maybe they play well right out the gate. Um, Austin Romain's actually been pretty solid in his limited number of snaps so, so far through three weeks. But it's just asking a lot to have two true freshmen play a lot, you know, a lot at linebacker in the first Big 12 game of the season. But that doesn't mean that they'll disappoint. These are two guys that can really play good football. It's just uh, a little bit of the roll of the dice. Because that's you know you know the Mike linebacker position, a lot of the checks going through that spot as well. So um, just a lot of responsibility for a true freshman. We'll see what happens under the bright lights. Night game too. Yeah. Well, and you know, I, two guys that are obviously very talented in Austin Romain and Asa Newsom to be getting as much playing time as they have early in the season, 
and to, to have popped up on the first depth chart of the year as true freshman. But the thing that kind of comes with some of these positions and, and that you really need to adjust to, to the certain you know positions and level you're at is, hey, the, the raw talent is there for these guys. It's just they probably don't have the mental side of it down yet to play that position in the Big 12 in at least a starting role. And that's one of those things where if you had been K-State, you would want to get through this year not having to make these guys play you know, in the neighborhood of like of starter snaps in a game. But instead, that's where you're going to be at now with uh, a lot of these guys, especially for this coming week and until Jake Clifton comes back to at least get a guy that's been in the program a year longer than these guys. It's not like Jake Clifton's going to come back and you get some dude that has, you know, 25 games under his belt. Jake Clifton was a, a true freshman last year in the same spot as Austin Romaine and uh, Asa Newsom this year getting some run as a, as a true frosh. So uh, it's – it's a significant deal for K-State to lose Daniel Green. Yeah, it's significant. And and I know a lot of fans, and, and this isn't to take anything away from Austin Romain or Asa Newsom. Those guys can come in and be great right away with little hiccups. But when you want to go with sometimes just the raw talented player over the experienced player that maybe isn't as talented, it doesn't always breed the most positive results. So it's something to keep in mind. It just happened last week, right? Jacob Parrish, he's 19 years old still, mm-hmm. I believe, um, uh, had two starts under his belt. That was his first power five, first start against the Power 5 opponent. Marquis Siegel, that was his second start ever at Kansas State. Two guys with a lot of talent, um, two guys that might play in the NFL someday, who knows. But first game, first road game, first road start, first time, first start against the Power 5 opponent last week against Missouri. And that inexperience allowed a lot of miscommunication and allowed a lot of the explosive plays that Missouri was able to get off. So talent only gets you so far. Sometimes that inexperience can really open up a football game. And like it or not, that was that inexperience led to a lot of that miscommunication in the secondary last Saturday against Missouri. So something to keep in mind because you're going to have some inexperience playing linebacker um, probably this Saturday. Yep, it's uh it's important to to take into consideration. I guess if you you want a silver lining here, it's that UCF is coming in with their backup quarterback, so you get your feet wet against uh, a guy that you know was slinging it at South Florida two years ago, didn't play at all last season, and uh, it's not John Rice Plumley, a guy that has you know played it in the SEC at Ole Miss, and then has been a really good quarterback for Central Florida, and also after this game against UCF, it's the bye week. That is helpful in a lot of ways. You can help get these guys up to speed a little bit more. Jake Clifton has more time to rest up, possibly be good to go for that game at Oklahoma State. And, oh, by the way, Oklahoma State, it's them and Iowa State for worst offense in the Big 12 right now. And, you know, Oklahoma State's trotting three different quarterbacks out there every single night. They did not run the ball well this past weekend against South Alabama. I think 3.2 yards a carry. So you at least have – a little bit of a grace period. You know, it's not easy. You're playing Power 5, Big 12 football, but it certainly could be a lot worse if, you know, the the first two opponents up this week were somebody like Oklahoma and Texas, like very well could happen. So um, that's at least something to take into consideration uh, with uh, the, the the spot that K-State's in right now with the, the young linebackers that are going to have to play. Yeah, and the good thing is this might be the last game that they're without Jake Clifton, so we'll check on that. Yeah, I mean, you think the injury probably healing up. Also, Jake Clifton, an Oklahoma native, I'm sure would love to be able to play in that game Friday night in Stillwater. So a lot to to look forward to. Chris Kleiman will uh, provide us updates on that stuff moving forward when we get to it uh, next week and the week after. But the latest update from Chris Kleiman, not a good one. Daniel Green, done for the year for the Wildcats. And in all likelihood, I mean, we'll, we'll finish it on this ending his K-State career. I mean, Daniel Green is a guy that has now played in parts of five seasons at K-State. He redshirted on the last Snyder team in 2018. And it's just, uh, that's a tough way to end your career when you decided to come back for another one. Uh, Most guys don't want to be in college that long. Daniel Green wanted to for a reason. And uh, unfortunately, he's not going to get the the opportunity to make it in the way he wanted it to. Yeah, you know, feel for him, and uh, Kansas State just needs to figure out a way to get through the UCF game with uh, as little problem as possible. Again, I, for one game with the true freshman starting middle linebacker, I think they 
they'll be able to to get through that and then perhaps some help after <laughs> excuse me afterwards from Jay Clifton but I mean make no mistake Dino Green hadn't been 100% for a couple of, for maybe yet this year and wasn't playing his standard of football probably mm-hmm. uh, not completely far from it he had two and a half tackles for lost <laughs> this past Saturday yeah despite- nine ta- he was leading tackler on the team too yeah leading tackler so uh maybe not playing the superb level he wanted but it's still a loss especially from an experience standpoint because people hate the experience thing when it trumps talent but you feel better about that when it's not costing you like it did in the secondary last week yep no just a a really unfortunate situation for all parties involved and We'll uh, have to to monitor and see what things look like moving forward for the K-State linebacker spot as some guys get thrown into the fire a lot quicker and faster than uh, what people would have uh, anticipated. Joe Klanerman's got some challenges ahead just because, you know, he's got to shore up some of the stuff that happened in the secondary last week. Now he's down a couple linebackers. Um, the last few weeks have not gone his way, but he is a good defensive coach. We'll see how he can pull pull him up from this. All right. Well, that will do it for us here at K-State Online. Be sure to stay locked in with everything we have going, whether it's at kstateonline.com or right here on our YouTube channel, as well as the podcast platforms. Make sure that you are subscribed in every way that you can to K-State Online to get the latest info on everything going on with the Wildcats. Good and as of the last couple of days, sadly, uh, a little bit more bad than what people would want at this point in the season. So for Derek Young, I'm Mason Vo. Thanks for watching K-State Online.